SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft has already made history. It ended NASA's dependency on Russia's Soyuz capsules, it became the first private spacecraft to carry astronauts to orbit, and it redefined what a reusable spacecraft could be. But in 2025, Dragon is undergoing a set of upgrades and mission expansions that take it to an entirely new level. And some of them are so innovative, they might just blow your mind. Let's start with what's arguably the most fundamental change, where Dragon is landing. In the early part of the commercial crew era, SpaceX typically recovered its crewed capsules in the Atlantic Ocean or the Gulf of Mexico. But in 2025, that changed. Now, SpaceX is landing Crew Dragon in the Pacific Ocean. Why? It all comes down to debris management. The trunk of the Dragon spacecraft, its unpressurized cargo module, is jettisoned before re-entry and burns up in the atmosphere. But sometimes, parts survive. SpaceX wanted to steer that debris toward one of the most remote places on Earth, Point Nemo. It's the so-called Spacecraft Cemetery far from human activity. By landing in the Pacific, SpaceX gives itself more control over when and where the trunk is released, improving environmental responsibility and reducing risks to people and shipping lanes. That change was first seen with Crew-10, launched in March 2025. Originally, this flight was meant to feature a brand new Dragon capsule, C-213. But delays in production including reported issues with battery systems, pushed the capsule's debut. So SpaceX and NASA pivoted, fast. They decided to reuse the Endurance capsule, already a veteran of multiple space flights. Reusability has always been part of the Dragon spacecraft's design. But now, SpaceX is working to take it even further. NASA originally certified each crew Dragon capsule for five crewed flights, but SpaceX is now working with NASA to raise that number to 15 flights per capsule. This would make Crew Dragon one of the most reusable human space vehicles ever made. Instead of building a new capsule for every flight, SpaceX is showing that it's possible to fly the same spacecraft multiple times with astronauts on board, similar to how commercial airplanes are reused. As of 2025, SpaceX has launched 12 crewed missions to the International Space Station using the Crew Dragon spacecraft. Out of all U.S. astronaut flights to the ISS since 2020, more than 60% were done by SpaceX. That means most American astronauts are now flying to space with a company that was founded only 20 years ago. One example of how important SpaceX has become is the recent Crew 10 mission. Two of the astronauts on that mission, Sunita, Suni Williams, and Butch Wilmore, originally traveled to the ISS aboard Boeing's Starliner capsule, but due to ongoing technical problems with Starliner, they couldn't return on the same vehicle. NASA had to move them to Crew Dragon instead. This made SpaceX the backup option when the other capsule failed. SpaceX is no longer just one of NASA's partners. It has become the main transportation system for U.S. astronauts. And in emergency situations, it's also the backup system. This raises an important question. How did SpaceX get to this point, especially when Boeing received more money to build its own spacecraft? In 2014, NASA selected both SpaceX and Boeing to build new crew vehicles. Boeing was awarded $4.2 billion. SpaceX got $2.6 billion. So, Boeing received over $1.6 billion more and had decades of experience in aerospace. But despite this, SpaceX finished development first and started flying astronauts in 2020 with the Demo-2 mission. Since then, SpaceX has completed 12 successful crewed flights. Boeing, on the other hand, has faced many delays. Its first uncrewed test flight in 2019 failed due to software problems. A second uncrewed flight in 2022 finally succeeded, but the first crewed mission has been delayed several times. Issues have included valve corrosion, software bugs, and problems with the parachute system. As of now, Starliner has not completed a single operational crewed mission, and the astronauts who flew up on its most recent test mission had to be brought back by SpaceX's Dragon due to continued issues with Starliner.
Boeing's Starliner program, despite receiving $4.2 billion from NASA's commercial crew program, has turned into a financial burden. The company has already reported over $1.5 billion in additional losses, pushing the total development cost to nearly $6 billion. These losses stem from repeated technical issues, redesigns, launch delays, and failures that forced Boeing to redo critical missions. Even now, Starliner hasn't completed a single operational crewed mission. Boeing's plan is to conduct just six operational flights before ending its participation in the program entirely. This is far from what was expected from one of NASA's most trusted legacy contractors. In contrast, SpaceX received only $2.6 billion under the same program, but delivered a fully certified crew vehicle that started flying operational missions back in 2020. Since then, Crew Dragon has launched astronauts on 12 successful missions, including flights for NASA, ESA, private space companies like Axiom, and civilian missions like Inspiration4. Each mission has generated significant revenue, with seats selling for tens of millions of dollars. A single private mission can bring in over $200 million, depending on its duration and objectives. This revenue, combined with the cost savings from reusing capsules and launch vehicles, has helped SpaceX build a profitable human spaceflight division. By 2023, SpaceX was earning more than $8 billion annually, and reports indicated over $500 million in net profit that year. While Boeing is still struggling to get Starliner off the ground and SpaceX is flying its 12th successful crewed mission, Blue Origin is busy with... drama. The company, backed by Jeff Bezos, recently found itself in an embarrassing situation after its New Shepard NS-31 mission, which by the way was its first crewed flight in nearly two years. The mission itself wasn't the problem, it was what happened after the capsule landed. Video footage surfaced showing the capsule's hatch door being opened from the inside, before Bezos walked up to open it from the outside for cameras. Yes, opened from the inside on what was supposed to be a sealed space capsule. That one moment sparked a flood of online criticism and conspiracy theories. People began questioning whether the capsule had really gone to space at all, or if it had been pre-opened on the ground for PR theatrics. The internet had a field day. Now to be clear, the hatch is designed to open from both sides, so it's technically possible for someone inside to unlatch it. But in the context of a space flight, especially one that claims to carry astronauts, it just looked ridiculous. The footage made the landing seem more like a staged red carpet moment than a serious space mission. And with passengers like Katy Perry and Jeff Bezos's fiancé Lauren Sanchez on board, the whole event started to resemble a publicity stunt more than a scientific achievement. And just when you think it couldn't get more awkward, Blue Origin decided to file a formal complaint against SpaceX with the FAA. They're asking regulators to limit Starship launches from Kennedy Space Center, claiming environmental and safety concerns. Yes, Blue Origin, a company that has launched only seven crewed suborbital flights since 2021, and none to orbit, is trying to slow down the one company that's actually making regular orbital flights. It's not the first time either. Blue Origin previously sued NASA in 2021 after SpaceX won the contract for the Artemis lunar lander. That lawsuit delayed NASA's moon program for months and achieved nothing in the end. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.